Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to help you get a lot more functionality out of your plugins. We're looking at how to sidechain using third party or non native plugins in FL Studio. So let's get right into it. I've opened up FL Studio and I want to highlight that this technique works with any plugins that can do external sidechaining. So whether you're using Fab Filter, Waves, Tokyo Dawn, Acoustica Audio, whichever plugins you use, the process is almost exactly the same. I'm going to be demonstrating with a few free and paid for plugins here. The first one I'm going to use is this TDR Molotok, an incredible free compressor. Then I'm going to show the same thing with this Acoustica Audio compressor. And then finally, I'm going to show it on TDR Nova, which is again, another incredible free plugin. I almost can't even believe it's free. It's that good. The most common use of side chaining is to compress one channel using the audio information from a different channel. For instance, I have these drums and this bass line. Let's take a listen. And I would like to use sidechain compression to reduce the volume of the bass whenever that kick hits. The first step is really simple. Just select the channel you want to be the audio input, the channel that's going to be triggering the compression. In this case, we're going to use the kick. Then on the channel that you want to compress, go down to the bottom, select this arrow, give it a right click and select sidechain to this track. You'll see that this dim rope has been selected here. So this is set up the sidechain so that the audio information from this track is being sent to the bass. We're not actually sending the audio itself, so none of that sound is going to get through, but we get all of that information. The next step is to load or open the plugin that we have in this case on the bass channel. I'm going to use that Molotok plugin because it's free and anyone can follow along, but this could be any plugin, it could be you know, a fab filter compressor. On your plugin, there should be an option to choose between an internal or external sidechain. So on TDR, it's at the top here, but on Fab Filter, it's at the bottom of the plugin, and on Acoustica Audio, it's actually a little LED here. So find that button. It, your compressor most likely does have one, especially if you've paid for it. In this case, it's a left click at the top, external sidechain. Unfortunately, this isn't everything. If I was to press play now, just with the bass soloed, you can see that the threshold here, the input, it's actually just that solid bass. It's not reacting to the kick. So if I was to compress, it's just constant compression the whole time. So the final step is a little bit hidden. You have to go to the detailed settings, which opens up this bar here. Then instead of being on the plugin editor, which we can see, we have to go to VST wrapper settings. So that's VST wrapper settings. And then this opens up three more tabs. You need to make sure you're on processing and then it shows you the sidechain input here. A right click here shows all the channels you have linked. And in this case, we're going to choose the kick to be our sidechain input. So I'm going to go through those steps one more time. You press this cog up here, VST wrapper settings, processing, and then it's available here. And when I press play, you can see that the threshold here is now listening to the kick drum instead of the bass. So if I lower that threshold, you can hear and see that compression is being applied to the bass only when that kick drum hits. And if I push it very far, you can even see on the mixer, every time the kick hits, the bass just ducks ever so slightly. So that's quite a simple way to do it. I'm gonna close this plugin now. I wanted to quickly show you on a different plugin because it's a little bit different depending on the plugin you use. This is Acoustical Audio, it's an Ivory 4 compressor. It's actually one of my favorite compressors, especially for mastering. I'm using this one all the time. And in this case, instead of being on the top bar, you have to just press this sidechain LED and then that enables the external sidechain. And sometimes knowing that is hidden away in the manual a little bit. You have to still go to the detailed settings, VST wrapper settings, processing, and then it's down here. And then you have to think, is it input one or input two? And in this case, I had to do a little bit of um, uh, testing and it's input two is the one that I need to use uh, to select the kick. That's a right click, select the kick. And now if I close this up, you can see that while the input remains the same, the gain reduction is only being applied when that kick hits. I don't want to go through those steps too many times because I think you, you get it by now, but I wanted to introduce a different sort of side chaining concept to you. And this is using another free plugin called TDR Nova. Now, while I do have a full tutorial for this plugin and I've used it in many other videos as well, there's something really interesting you can do with these dynamic EQ plugins when you sidechain. And this is that 
instead of just reducing the volume of a whole channel based on the input from a different channel, you could just reduce a very specific frequency based on another channel. So we're going to get a little bit theoretical here. So let's say you had a sustained atmospheric pad sound, and then you had something like a vocal that you wanted to be able to cut through on top of that. You could sidechain the vocal to the pad, but only on certain frequencies. And this way, whenever the vocal sings, you could say reduce a little bit of the, the high end or the upper mids in the atmospheric sound just whilst the vocal is singing and it can help one element stand out in the mix. And I've actually done this quite a lot of times with competing mid-range elements. Say you've got like a piano and you've got some staccato cello or something and you want that cello to just sort of poke through the mix a little bit more, have a little bit more of a, a transient feel you could reduce some of the frequencies in the piano based on what the cello is playing. So I'm going to use this same sort of drum loop and bass example for this again. And with Nova loaded up here on the bass channel, remember we've done that a side chain from the kick to the bass, and I'm going to select the external side chain up here. Come on, external side chain. Then we're doing detailed settings, VST wrapper settings, processing, and then the aux input, which is the sidechain input, is going to be the kick. So if I press play, you can see initially the analyzer on input mode is showing me the bass, but if I change it to sidechain, it's going to show me the kick, as you can see here. And now, say I were to select the first band, now this might, you might get a little bit lost here if you don't know how Nova works, so I would recommend watching the tutorial for it. But if I turn on the threshold for this band, and lower the threshold here, it means that every time the kick hits, energy is being taken away only from the low end of the bass and you could apply this to any of the frequencies so I could uh, instead change the frequency up here and say whenever the kick hits I want to just remove top end from the bass so that obviously in this case doesn't make sense but it means that you can be much more selective with your side chaining instead of having to reduce the gain of the entire channel now, doing this can sound more natural or it can sound much more unnatural. You've just got to use your ears and let that, you know, guide your decision. Something I have found to help with this sort of sidechain compression, especially when it's frequency dependent, I find having a fairly fast attack and release helps, maybe going into sort of a medium uh, attack and release. But if you have a fairly long attack and release, I find that you can really hear the compressor sort of trying to recover and ducking the gain down and it tends to sound quite unnatural unless you're trying to go for some sort of cool sound design effect in which case of course it's all good. I did say it would be quite a quick video so that's all I really want to show you but I do really want to encourage you to try and get the most out of these plugins because I, I find a lot of users uh, they buy plugins and there's a lot of functionality there and some of it like this is just hidden away. It's just behind, you know, a few pages in the manual or, you know, just a few settings in this uh, wrapper settings here. And if you can just sort of dive just a little bit deeper, sometimes uh, some of the features and functions that you really wish were there, we're sometimes sort of hiding there uh, the whole time. Especially with this Nova plugin, I really would recommend uh, watching my full tutorial uh, for Nova where I sort of explain what dynamic EQ is and where to use it. It's actually one of my favorite videos. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.